Hey, I'm Derek Kirk of Epictotron and CG Shortcuts. In today's video, we're going to go over mixing noises with color layers to create an organic procedural frost, as well as taking a look at the basics of redshift displacement. If you want to learn more in depth about the nodes we cover and more, be sure to check out my Redshift Materials Masterclass, available now, DerekKirk.net. The shader graph can be really intimidating, especially if you're new to Redshift or just node rendering in general. And this class goes over pretty much every node in a way that's very basic from building a foundation of understanding and adding on that each node at a time. That way you understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and when you should do it. So be sure to check that out. There's a link for that below in the description. Okay, so today we are making ice. Ice is nice. It's going to be 100% procedural, meaning it uses noises instead of texture maps, so we can change the look of it just by changing some values, something you can't do with texture maps. We'll also be able to control the amount of frost and even animate it on to pre something or off the thought. We're going to use redshift displacement and the redshift object tag in combination with the material blender to create some nice looking ice. Let's start off by just creating a cube, scale it to 80, 80, 80. And it's important to note that whenever you're going to use displacement, we want to use a higher polygon count for more detail. But with redshift, we don't actually have to go as high as we would if we were using the standard C4D render and the displacement modifier because Redshift uses render time tessellation. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. So let's just do 50 segments for each of the axes. Let's bring our cube up a little bit here and rotate it. Just so we have that nice angle to look at there. Let's do a fillet of three with five segments. Now create a Redshift material. Throw that on our cube and open the shader graph as well as the render view. Let's start with the preset of glass as a jumping off point. Change the IOR to 1.2. Lowering this is going to make our ice cause less distortion. If you want more distortion, increase the IOR. Now let's create some organic roughness for our ice because we don't want it to be clear like this. I often like to combine two noises together to get a more complex look than just one noise. So to do that, we need to go ahead and add two Maxon noise nodes as well as an RS color layer. The color layer is what's going to let us mix our nodes together. I like to connect my noise to the surface so I can see how it's going to be applied. I set up control Q for my hotkey for this. Let's set the noise type to FBM and then the scale source to world. This is important when you're using this material on other objects. Since we're using noise maps, we want to use the world scale so it doesn't get all screwed up when we put this on other materials that are different sizes. Now let's move to the second noise. Set it to Luca, change the source to world and the scale to 2.4. Also, let's slide the low clip up just a bit to around 0.2. And to combine these, we plug the first noise into the base color and the second into layer one color. Let's hook up our color layer to the surface. We need to set the blend mode to add and then bring the mask down just a bit to 0.8. The area that is white is gonna be the higher roughness and the area that's black is gonna be smooth. Plug the color layer into the reflection roughness. Already, you can see that this ice is looking better but it could use some bump. So let's add a bump note and another noise. This is going to add the nice bumpy uneven surface to our ice, and we're gonna to wanna to change this noise type to wavy turbulence. Set the source to world again, plug that into the bump node, and then that into the overall bump input. Now we need to create the material that we want to mix in here to make this less boring. Create a new material, Set the diffuse to white and up the roughness to one, and then also up the reflection roughness to 0.8. We just want this to be kind of our snow look. So now we go back to our ice material, add a material blender node and a reference node. In the reference node, add our white material. Using a reference node can be helpful because you can swap out materials easily and it updates any changes you make to the material automatically. But most importantly, it helps keep your shader graph from getting way too crazy when you're using a bunch of different complex materials together. Okay, connect the RS material to the base color of the blender and then the reference node to the layer one color. Now we need to create how the frost is going to be mixed with this and at the same time create a displacement map for the frost. So let's select our two noises and our color layer and we're just gonna control click drag these to make a copy of them down here. For the first one, we just wanna change the scale to 0.5 and let's bring that low clip up to around 0.25. And then for the second one, we want to set it to FBM as well, and then change the scale to 1. And then we're going to take the low clip up to 0.45. Set our blend layer to normal. Now add a ramp node, then connect that to the material blender layer 1 blend color. Adding this ramp node means we can control the amount of frost. Bringing the white knot down will make it frostier, and bringing the black knot up will make it less frosted. 
Now this looks pretty decent, but what's going to really take it to the next level is going to be our displacement. Because we used our mix layers, we can actually use this for the displacement. That way it's only going to be displaced where the frost is and not over the whole object. So add a displacement node, plug our color layer into the texture map for the displacement, and then displacement into output displacement. Right now we won't see any difference because unlike the modifier displacement, the C4D has the redshift displacement as the tessellation and displacement at render time and not in the viewport. And it won't do anything without a redshift object tag. Right click our cube and add a redshift object tag. Go to geometry tag, click override. Enable tessellation. This is going to let us add subdivisions to our surface object at render time. Now enable displacement. Now we can see our object has displacement on it, but we want it to be a little more detailed and more dramatic. Set the max displacement to 3 and the displacement scale to 5. Now these values are affected by the scale of your object, so if you're doing your own object, you might need to tweak these values. Here it's pretty cool, but not as detailed as I was hoping for still. So what we need to do is actually affect the minimum edge length and the maximum subdivision so we can get more detail. Change the minimum edge length to 1 and the maximum subdivisions to 10. Now going too low for the edge length can really increase the render time as well as making your subdivisions too high. But right now this is looking really good. Now the best part is, is we go in here to our ramp and start sliding it around. You can see how we can control our look so easily. So now we can go in, change the seeds, change the noise types. We can have all kinds of different frosts. We can even use this to make something like overgrown grass or dirt or anything like that. Just really change it up with just a few clicks. Let's add this to some text. So let's go over here and just drag and drop this material on our text. We need to have some decent geometry on here as well, as well as a redshift object tag with displacement enabled. Some adjusting of the displacement in the tag may be required, as well as some scaling for the noise depending on your scene. You can see right now that if I'm as I every time I move around, it has to recalculate the tessellation because of our displacement. So one tip that's super helpful is once you get your displacement values how you want them, just hit these snowflakes here. It'll calculate that once, and as long as you don't exit out or stop the IPR, it will not have to render and recalculate those tessellations every time so you can actually move around and see your scene a lot faster. So now that we have this created with this ramp, you can see how easy it is to control the amount of frost we have on our object just by adjusting the knots in this ramp. Hopefully you got some helpful tips out of that. Let me know in the comments below of any suggestions for the future. Stay frosty. See you next time. <laughs>